What's going on, everybody? The New York Jets just wrapped up their second preseason game with a win over the Atlanta Falcons. Here to give you everything you need to know as fast as I possibly can. If you appreciate that, a thumbs up is an easy way to show it. And if you're not already, go ahead and hit subscribe so you don't miss any of my daily Jets training camp updates. Now, first things first, uh, health. Came away relatively healthy still. We didn't play hardly any uh, starters, any veteran starters. Tariq Black and Lawrence Cager did walk off with some injuries, but they both left under their own control. We'll get word on those soon, but uh, Tariq Black took a nasty fall, and then Lawrence Cager took what looked to me like kind of a stinger, but uh, we'll have to wait for the official reports on those two, wishing them both the best. The quarterbacks, Mike White playing into the second half, which was surprising to me, went 12 of 17 for 90 yards, no picks, no touchdowns, looks comfortable in the pocket, makes quick decisions, but just has limited uh, arm talent, got rid of the ball quickly. It only took one sack, so Mike White looked like Mike White. He looked like a third-string quarterback. That's a fine performance for your third-string quarterback. Then Chris Streveler comes in, and man, this guy's got some juice to him. I really like the way he played. Aggressive, uh, physical, fearless, brought some swagger, some life, made the game kind of fun to watch down the stretch. 8 for 11, 119 yards, one long touchdown throw to Lawrence Cager. Did throw an interception where you know he took a chance, and a Atlanta Falcons uh, safety made an incredible play to pick it off. And then with his legs was our leading rusher. Six carries for 33 yards on the night for Strebler. Let's get into the good. Garrett Wilson only had three catches for 15 yards, but it was like the most impressive 15 yards ever. Just his ability to not be open and still be open. The sticky hands in tight space. I know he dropped some balls at Ohio State. He's dropped some balls in camp. But for every ball that Garrett Wilson drops, he makes two catches that most guys can't make. So I'm not worried about his drops too much. On the wide receiver front, Denzel Mims is probably the best uh, wide receiver, him and Lawrence Cager on the day. Denzel Mims going four catches, 47 yards, uh, two can catches in a row in the first half to set up a field goal. Then Mims in the second half had a ball that you know, wide receivers are going to tell you to drop. It hit both of his hands, but it did hit uh cornerback's hand first and it was raining, but not going to make an excuse. It hit both of his hands. We would have liked him to catch it, but overall, a very strong uh, showing for Denzel Mims. Lawrence Cager, three catches, led the team in receiving uh, yards with 65, and he had the one receiving touchdown on the day. He you know, he looks, uh, man, he's like uh, the tight end body and the wide receiver speed, uh, switching from wide receiver to tight end. If we keep a fourth tight end, my money's on Cager. I think he brings us a little bit extra juice in the passing game over a guy like Yaboa or Trevon Wesco. Tanzel Smart and Jonathan Marshall both played really well down the stretch on the defensive interior, uh, just physically overwhelming the third, fourth string offensive line of the Atlanta Falcons. And Michael Clemens did have two pressures and drew a holding penalty. And that was the consistent theme throughout. You know, we didn't we only had two sacks. But Atlanta committed like eight or nine offensive holding penalties. A holding penalty is just as good as a sack. They couldn't hang with our uh, defensive line, the depth of it. Okay, now getting into the bad. Well, the first team, which is really like the second team because we didn't play our starters, um, it kind of looked like Philadelphia where Marcus Mariota was just carving through, getting whatever he wanted, uh, blown assignments, guys wide open, a rough night for LaMarcus Joyner getting beat deep. A rough night for Bryce Hall, getting beat uh, three times, including giving up a long one to Kyle Pitts, which Kyle Pitts is going to do that to a lot of people. And then he gave up a touchdown to a receiver that I don't even know who uh, he is. It was a good ball uh, by Mariota. And all these takes are through the lens of its preseason. I get that. But last year, the Jets had an awful defense. And then, you know, we hoped for glimmers that it is going to be a little bit better. And I don't think we've gotten that yet, but uh, we're not going to panic until the games that matter. But uh, I don't know. Am I a bad fan? Because I I preferred them to do a little better. Okay. Uh, I don't know what people want me to do. I'm not, I'm not going to cheer when our team is doing bad, even though it's preseason. Now, who? Uh, oh, also, the offensive line didn't hasn't really created any running lane so far in preseason. Dwayne Brown and George Fant haven't really played though. So the offensive line, that's one unit that really has taken no snaps together. But they did do good in pass uh, protection tonight. Uh, kept a, re a really clean pocket from Mike White, who did a good job getting the ball out uh, on time. He was comfortable uh, the whole first half. They, they kept him clean. Now, who surprised? Bradley and I. Man, 
Where did he come from? Well, the Cowboys practice squad last year had a strip sack, the scoop, and the score all by himself to put the Jets up, and he also had a nasty spin move to force a throwaway in the red zone uh, down the stretch. Jamie and Sherwood uh, got a lot of reps at Mike Linebacker. He's going to be C.J. Mosley's uh, backup this year. Had two really nice tackles, one down in the red zone, and had a pass defended, dropping back in zone coverage. Will Parks. Why is, you know, can someone tell me why Will Parks can't be the starting free safety over LaMarcus Joyner? What has LaMarcus Joyner shown that he he's being penciled in as a starting free safety? Or Jason Pinnock? Look, Jay, Will Parks is younger, bigger, more athletic, healthier, and playing better than LaMarcus Joyner. So I think that should be a conversation that we have as we head towards the regular season coming up in a couple of weeks. And then Tony Adams, safety, who I really liked, undrafted free agent, athletic freak in every sense of the word out of Illinois, but hasn't really made a peep in camp. He came up and made a really nice stick on a third down. Some battles to watch for. Got some battles heating up. Now, tight end four. If we keep a tight end four, I think Lawrence Cager is starting to separate himself. Trevon Wesco had two or three penalties tonight. Wasn't a good night for him. Kenny Eboa had two catches uh, and one drop, so he was... Kind of okay, but Lawrence Cager stole the show, and I think right now, if I had to pick, if we keep a fourth tight end, I think it's it's got to be Cager. And then running back three. So Tevin Coleman got a lot of work, and he's also an emergency kick returner. Bam Knight, he could be a running back three and an emergency kick returner. So if you don't think you can keep Bam Knight in the practice squad and you like him and you like um, his youth, his potential, do you cut Tevin Coleman? Well, Michael P. Ryan had a touchdown, and he had a good showing uh, against the Philadelphia Eagles. Michael P. Ryan does bring a little bit of physicality. Can he stay healthy? And then wide receiver. I think you know Denzel Mims, Irvin Charles, and Calvin Jackson, they're all fighting for one spot. I think Mims uh, has the slight edge, but we'll see. Those Both of those other two guys can give you something on special teams. Calvin Jackson returning a couple punts, so that's going to come down to the wire, I would imagine. Obviously, Denzel Mims, there's going to be trade talk until there's not. And then the kickers, they both made both of their kicks. Greg Zerloin, one for one on field goals, one for one on point afters, and Eddie P, two for two on both of his point after touchdowns. Looks like Zerloin has the slight uh, advantage in the kicking battle, and we'll see how that shakes out. All right, we're 2-0. Let's go Jets.